In many, many languages of the world, people describe things by using word pictures. They say someone or something is like something else. We can say they paint pictures with words. He's a snake in the grass. He's a real old goat. He's as cold as a fish. He's as slow as a tortoise. She's as curious as an emu. Notice how we like to draw a picture with our words. We might compare them over kids to a flock of noisy birds. I'll see a hungry man and say he's eating like a horse. I'll say a man down on his luck is a ship blown off its course. We call these pictures similes and metaphors, you see. They make a story come alive and flow more naturally. They show how two quite different things are a little bit the same. As long as you can work out how the picture fits the name. When we say in our language, uh Shia Ahas, he's a snake. In other words, he's a traitor. Because there might be a snake living in your house, and one day that ha that snake will just bite you. In other words, he is among us, but he is a traitor. Uh, we said you a snake, or we said ular, kamu ular. People very cunning or sly or something like that. Yes. For one who spends money carelessly uh, without thinking of the tomorrow, we say he's a man of otakai. Otakai yen. Otai means hole. Kai means hand. His hand is full of holes because the money goes out easily. And also, like people walking. You might want them to walk faster. You're not part of the chair, right? No, it don't walk like a porcupine. In Afrikaans, we do have a lot of parallels, but so there are some things like um, I, I is a rechte hunderkop. You know, he's really uh, he's a he's a henhead. You know, he's just stupid, totally. I said after Haspian, he's he really runs very fast. Haspian is a is a rabbit legs, so he runs very fast. He's a real baboon, you know. Oh, he's he's just crazy. Then we have also a saying in the Philippines, uh, you eat like a pig, which you also say it here. Now which is really a terrible thing to say and insult someone. A very greedy you are and uh, and you like as much to it as you can, you do not think of any other people. Or getting away from animals for something quite different. There is an expression in Singhala, Kiripenivage, and quite literally it means like yogurt or curds and honey. And uh, curds and honey is a very traditional desert in uh, in Sri Lanka and it's something which is is very very popular it is probably the most popular of the traditional uh, deserts and um, also the most desired and uh, it it comes it's used to mean the perfect match because the two have to go together and that's what makes it the perfect desert and so it's uh, used to mean a perfect match. So it could, can be used uh, for anything. It can be used for relationships between people or anything else. Uh, that's a perfect match. Uh, uh, the other thing is, uh, example I found is Kakiri Palena Hinava. Uh, it is to describe the way you smile. Some people smile without showing the teeth. Some people show everything, 
uh, all the teeth that they have and they, they smile, open the mouth widely uh, and it shows as if the, 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 the teeth are shown as like the seeds of the melon fruit. The English rendering of that would be a melon splitting smile. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now let's think a bit more about what we are doing when we use pictures when we talk. In Wikmunken, they sometimes say about an old lady, young and walk, which means her hair is grass, or rather light grass. Could that mean that her hair is green like grass? Or does it mean that weeds sometimes grow up amongst it? Or does it mean that someone has to mow it occasionally with a lawnmower? Well, in actual fact, they only mean one thing, that the old lady's hair has become rather dry and was sticking out like dry grass does. So when we talk like this, using pictures, saying someone is like something else, we don't mean that they are like that in every way, only in one way. We call this the point of likeness. It is very important for us to understand what picture language means when we translate from another language, because people of each language use pictures they know and understand, things from their own life, culture and country, things which will sometimes be new to people of other cultures. In Western culture, we sometimes say a person has a vice-like grip. This doesn't make much sense unless we know what a vice is. So a person who has a vice-like grip is someone who can hold something very strongly and tightly in his hands. But in parts of the South Pacific, someone is more likely to say, he has a grip like a coconut crab. If you hadn't seen a crab gripping something with his claws, then this mightn't make much sense. Sometimes we have to work really hard to understand the point of likeness. When I lived at Aracoon in North Queensland, people would sometimes talk about shy, frightened people who were always trying to protect themselves. They'd call them poi mich, which means soft crab. I didn't really understand that till some time later when I learnt that as a crab grows he sheds his armour plating and then he waits for a new larger one to harden. And in this time of waiting he has no real protection and he can be easily attacked. And during that time he's often uh, fairly shy and timid and always trying to protect himself. Another problem is that people of different languages sometimes use the same pictures but with different meanings. For example, if I say in English, he's a chicken, I mean that someone is afraid and cowardly, he runs away from a fight. But in Brazil, if you call a man a chicken, you mean he is like a rooster, always chasing women. In Tonga, it has a different meaning again. Ah, uh, yes. You describe people as uh, more hehengi, a chicken that's not been um, made to feel welcome, a chicken that's afraid of coming close. Now, if you call someone a more hehengi, that's a very shy, exclusive person. In English, if we say that someone is like an owl, we mean they're wise. But in Indonesia... Yes, yes. Um, the owl. Over here, it means very wise person, isn't it? If you have a look at the owl itself, the eyes of the owl, it, they look a bit scary, don't you think? So, <laughs> over there in Indonesia, a woman, when they put their makeup really um, strong, if the color is too bright or too thick, then they will just refer it, they look like an owl. 
and they do believe owl is always gives you um, bad luck. So they always rela relate an owl just like a ghost. Mm -hmm. So when you call someone you look like an owl, that it means you look like a ghost. Another interesting case is that of lightning. In Norwegian, we might say, han är quick som lynet. Och det betyder, that means, he's quick as lightning. And we say that in English too. But listen to these examples in Tamil. Minnel ide, that is uh, waste like lightning. It is so small, it is like lightning. But lightning doesn't go on forever, it comes and goes. So something happens like, sometimes you know the person will be abroad and comes to his country now and then, so he appears like a, the lightning. Yeah. That's what we mean. Some might call you an owl and mean you're wise But in another language it might mean you've got big eyes They might call you a tree trunk and mean you're big and round In another language they mean your feet are on the ground When translating pictures the job is just the same First check out the meaning, that's the way to play the game The Bible is full of picture language Take the book of Proverbs for a start Beauty in a woman without good judgment is like a gold ring in a pig's snout. You fool! Leave this land at once! The king's anger is like the roar of a lion. <coughs> Sometimes in the Bible, picture language is used to describe someone's feelings or character. I am no longer a man. I am a worm, despised and scorned by everyone. Psalm 22.6 I am content and at peace. As a child lies quietly in its mother's arms, so my heart is quiet within me. They are like watchdogs. They don't bark. They only lie around and dream. <laughs> For telling about how we live, Paul said of himself, The time has come for me to leave this life. I have done my best in the race, I have run the full distance, and I have kept the faith. And God is often described for us in pictures. But you, O Lord, are always my shield from danger. Psalm 3.3 The Lord is my protector. He is my strong fortress. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Also, God's word is described for us in pictures. The psalmist said, Your word is a lamp to guide me and a light for my path. Jesus, too, used pictures to tell us about himself. In John's Gospel we read, I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. Jesus also used word pictures when he was teaching people about the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew 13, 31 and onwards, he said it was like a tiny seed that grows into a huge tree. He said it was like a woman mixing yeast with flour and then the bread rising. He said it was like drawing in a net full of fish, then sorting out the good fish and throwing away the bad ones. One of the most interesting things about pictures in the Bible is that such different pictures are used to help us learn something about the one person. In Revelation 5, Jesus is called both a lion and a lamb. What different kinds of animals could you have? One is huge, powerful, strong, dangerous, and the other is small, helpless and gentle. The fact is that Jesus is both strong and powerful like a lion and also gentle like a lamb. He also went to his death as a sacrifice for us, like the lambs were killed for sacrifices. The other interesting thing about pictures in the Bible is that the same picture can be used with different meanings.
Take the eagle, for instance. In Isaiah 40, 31, we read, Those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. Here it is talking about how strong the eagle is. Then in Deuteronomy 32.11 we read, Like an eagle teaching its young to fly, catching them safely on its spreading wings, the Lord kept Israel from falling. This is quite a different meaning again. Just as the eagle cares for and protects the baby eagles from danger, so the Lord cares for and protects the people of Israel. Then in Job 9.26 we read, My life passes like the swiftest boat, as fast as an eagle swooping down on a rabbit. Here, the speed of the eagle is what we need to think about. And that's just a beginning. What we've seen on this video is also just a beginning to the whole subject of picture language. When you translate picture talk, man, take care. It's easy to go wrong, traps everywhere. Check out what the picture means, think about it, then understand the meaning first before you grab your pen.